Hi everyone, Dr. Kaminsky here for The Learning Scientist. Um, today I wanted to go over a question that we actually got from one of our readers that I thought was really interesting. Um, it actually boiled down to something like, what schedules of retrieval practice or space practice do you as a learning scientist use to keep on top of all of the information that you're learning? Um, and this was asked sort of in the context of, of wondering like, you know, gosh, there's so much stuff that you have to learn and to stay on top of. If you have a schedule of retrieval practice for all of it, doesn't it all get overwhelming? And how do you keep track of all of that? Like, what would you do? And I thought this was interesting because my first sort of response to it, my first thought was, I don't do that. <laughs> um, I kind of don't have to. Uh, not because I'm not practicing with that information or retrieving it, but because it's more of what I you might call a naturalistic schedule of spaced practice or retrieve practice. And then it kind of occurred to me that there are, um, in the terms of like professional realm, uh, two different ways that this might be accomplished. One is that in um, different professions, a lot of times you have certifications or continuing certifications or continuing education that there actually are governing bodies that say like, hey, in order to be working in this field or to be certified as this, you need to maintain some sort of base level of proficiency. And we have all agreed on what that is. In my field in cognitive psychology, that doesn't exist. Um, instead, I think the assumption is that one, I have a PhD, so I have some base level of proficiency. And two, as an active scholar and researcher in the area, I am being maintained, I am current and relevant in this information because I'm actively engaging in it all the time, right? And so the nature of it's a little bit different. So I, as a hardworking cognitive psychologist, don't really do a lot of spaced retrieval practice. Um, I don't like set up, I don't, I'm not like going over flashcards um, in my spare time because I am, through the nature of what I'm doing, engaging with these concepts regularly, right? So for example, right, writing for the learning scientists and making videos like this, I am pretty much constantly thinking about schedules of retrieval practice. Um, and so I don't really need to keep up on that. That's, be, that's happening through what I'm doing. Um, however, right, I, I, when I was thinking about this question, I thought, gosh, there are some things that I used to get, um, that I'm not getting anymore. For example, I used to teach psychology and that meant that every year or twice a year, usually I would teach or maybe three times a year, um, I would teach introduction to psychology. And so there'd be certain topics that I would be kind of always re refreshing and updating myself on like sleep, right? That's not my main area of focus and research, but it is kind of related to it. And it certainly comes up very frequently um, in the classes I would teach. And so I would at least three times a year have to talk about sleep. And so I would know more about it. Now I'm not doing that. I'm not teaching in psychology anymore. So I don't have that. And so part of me was like thinking, it'd be kind of great if I had, um, some governing body that said, hey, in order to call yourself a cognitive psychologist, you just have to have some sort of minimum proficiency in your knowledge about sleep and sleep cycles. Um, and then I could do that, you know, some sort of little training exam once a year, and then I'd keep up on it, but I don't have that. The other area in which this probably is relevant is, and, and I think probably what the nature of the question was about, was, well, yeah, Maybe it's not necessarily your job per se, but you're a lifelong learner. You like learning new things. And so you have a lot of hobbies and interests and things that you're engaging with. How do you maintain or keep track of all of that? So um, there, I think you it does make sense to be a little bit more intentional. For example, um, I'm planning a trip to France. That I'm really excited about. Um, and so I'm doing all of the things, right? I am doing, um, I'm... I've got an app to like practice vocabulary and phrases because I took French in high school and college, but haven't spoken it since. Um, and so that is something that I try to do every day, right? To keep fresh on that. I'm engaging with like history lessons and reading up on locations. And so I'm doing a lot of learning and like actual scheduled practice and spaced practice with that material with the goal of, um, 
going and taking a trip in several months, right? And so that does look a little bit more like the advice we give in terms of learning and learning for um, for school. And so this kind of brings me to the second part of what I found to be really interesting about this question was when when do you stop? When do you st- how do you know when it's good? You don't need to keep going through that flashcard deck or you don't need to uh, you know keep doing that schedule practice. And who decides that? How do you decide that? Um, And I think that's a really interesting question that I don't necessarily know the answer to, which is why I kind of wanted to talk about it during office hours um, to hopefully talk through some things that that might be useful for you if you have this question as a learner or as a teacher, right? How how do you know? In 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 a sort of like structured educational setting, in a school setting, it kind of makes more sense. You're like, oh... Well, not that you should be like learning to the test, but that's just a natural kind of break point, right? Where you're like, oh, okay, now we can go on to the next thing. And usually, right, coursework's made to build on itself, right? And so once you learn the stuff on the first course, that gives you prepared to learn stuff for the next, right? And you kind of work your way on up. So that progression makes sense and is a little bit more natural, not, not natural, but like there's, there's really clear transition and break points. When you're not learning in that context, however, it's not always so clear. And so here I think there's probably a few things to consider. I think first and foremost, uh, if this is outside the context of like continuing certifications that you're required to do in order to keep your job, right? Then like clearly you need to do those. Um, But if this is just, hey, I, I... I'm learning this thing and I'm interested in it, but like, when is, when is enough, right? When do I kind of switch over? I think it depends on your goals, right? What is the nature of this thing that you are embarking in? Is this um, something that you're doing for fun just because it's kind of cool to learn new things? Um, And maybe you can set, you set some sort of arbitrary goal that you will be able to remember X amount of stuff or participate in this thing and score some kind of score and do well, right? And then you'll know, but you've got it and that's cool and maybe you can move on to the next thing um another thing is like i mentioned like i'm refreshing myself on french so i can go to france right um and i would say i don't think i expect you stay current with french the same way after this trip right um maybe i would love that life for myself if i just as a result of this have now become more conversant in French, I don't think I would be fluent. But like that would be a cool new skill to set up. Um, unlikely, I just don't think I know that many people who speak French where I live. Um, and so it just probably wouldn't occur. But it'd be kind of nice. But even so, the goals of learning a language would shift from being able to move around in a foreign country to being able to converse with a colleague or a friend, right? In which case the goals for that are slightly different. Um, And so the way I might study or prepare for that or engage with that might also look different. So what are your goals? Is there sort of a natural transition or break point in terms of like taking a trip, participating in some event, right? Uh, I think those all are points where you can switch over from a very structured, planned way of reviewing Choose something that is more natural or naturalistic, right? Um, if, let's say, I, I get a French conversation partner, and it's maybe a fun thing for me to do, uh, I would imagine that working out where it'd be like once a week or once a month, I'd meet up with this person and we would talk in French, and maybe I'd brush up on some stuff in between. It would be, in that case, that would be sort of a semi structured retrieval practice, space practice situation. Um, and that would kind of be determined by the constraints or the goals of those interactions. So um, it's it would be it's really interesting to think about for me. <laughs> really interesting to think about how how do people make that determination? Right? When is there any sort of best practice in terms of like when you should switch over outside of the considerations I just mentioned? And if there's any way to kind of know, like I said about um, brushing up on like sleep stuff, right? Like for me in my profession or anybody's profession or hobby or, you know, area of interest, like, hey, it's been a while since you've engaged with this information. Maybe you might want a refresher on it. 
Um, I could see a benefit for that for, I mean, hobbyists. Absolutely, there is interest in this, I know, and um, people trying to, you know, figure this out for professional things, right? Because it would be really nice if you knew, like, hey, ooh, uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, everyone should be, be fresh on all this stuff. But realistically, you can't in any sort of profession or area, like, it, I, it, there, you, there's a certain volume thing where, like, having everyone sit down once a year for refresher is could be unrealistic or just not super useful. Um, as opposed to, like, what if you could spread it out and maybe every third year you should be doing this stuff and it should be a little bit different because research shows that it's every three years that this comes up for you in your profession and it's relevant and useful to you now. Um, that's very complicated. I'm sure varies profession to profession, but I thought that was really interesting. So I really appreciated the interesting and thought provoking question. Thank you. Um, and I hope it was interesting for other people to listen to me um, think through this because it's a little bit different than what we usually talk about because it's learning in a different context, which I always find to be really interesting.